When we started this project, we wanted to come up with a cool idea of how to measure the impact force or energy on a target downrange. We know we can pull this information off a box of ammo, but that's not interesting. We wanted to be able to actually show you on steel what was happening when that target actually swayed back, how much it would sway back and how much movement you're seeing down there. Go back to your youth, you see these punching bag machines on all these shorts and stuff. Some massive person punches this thing, it swings back and it locks out and gives you a number. We thought, well, that's kind of a cool idea with a punching bag, but obviously we can't shoot a punching bag. We'd have to go and do some manipulation and we didn't even know if we could even find a punching bag machine or, or at least find one locally. And a few minutes on Facebook Marketplace and a pickup truck, we were able to find actually two of these things and for pretty cheap. We are MDT. We design, test and create precision rifle chassis and accessories to help you shoot better. So one of the guys at the shop went to go pick up two punching bag machines and they got back to the shop. We had no idea what kind of condition these things were in, if we were able to use any of the internal guts on them. We got these things, we went and took a look at them and nothing worked on them. They were totally gutted. So at this point, we're starting from scratch. We need to go and kind of assess these machines, see if we need to go and combine the two together, if there's one better than the other. Uh, and we started digging into it and Remy started having some ideas, I had some ideas and we started tearing stuff apart and taking grinders to things. So we all know how a punching bag machine works. You punch a bag, it swings back, it locks out of the way, it gives you a number. Well, that wasn't gonna work for us. We needed something to shoot at first off. So a piece of steel AR500 like we do for all of our long range shooting. We needed a way to measure that angle of the steel coming back. And then we needed to show a conversion of some kind of energy uh, on a screen so we could read it from a distance. The first one was very easy to do. We have tons of steel around. We literally just went, cut the bag off with a grinder, drilled a hole and attached a piece of steel to it. After getting the steel on there, we needed a way to measure that steel moving. And that's when I had to call on part of our team here and Remy was able to help us out with that. So at first I kind of had to figure out, well, what do we have to work with here? We have a swing piece of steel. So what data can we get off of that? and what sensors would we need to be able to read said data. The most important part was the angle that the steel would swing back. You can use a couple different sensors to get the reading for the acceleration, for the angle, and then with those we can do some extensive calculations to finally figure out how much energy that bullet is imparting on the piece of steel. First step forward, uh, we have to get some sensors. So I jump on Amazon, order a few sensors, now we can code a little program to read that data from the sensor. We wire it up uh, to an Arduino and then to the back of the piece of steel. So now we're out shooting, trying to see if we can get any type of accurate data from that. In the end, we got a ton of noise from the sensors and we could not get any consistent feedback. Okay, yeah, that one has some long key readings. So now it's become more of a complex project. Now we kind of have to take a step back, see if it's a matter of getting a better sensor, if it's a matter of placing it on the piece of steel in a different way. There's a couple different variables to look at. So I ordered a, an industrial grade sensor that took into account shock resistance and a lot of other things set up a little bit more towards this type of heavy use. What happened with the old sensor was it worked when you just kind of push it with your hand, but when you actually hit it really hard and fast, like metal on metal contact, then that like impulse shock force gave faulty readings for the first, let's say half a second. But the the reading that we really want comes within that time frame, So it was hard to get an accurate reading. We were looking at how do we place it a little bit more out of the way from where the bullet is going to directly impact. Your sensor's gone. That would do it. I was like, why are these readings like staying at like a 90 degree angle? Because <laughs> it's at a 90 degree angle. That makes sense. We went up into the top of the machine and then was able to 3D print a housing and then hook up the sensor so it's far more out of the way from where the bullet is impacting and then try to reduce the amount of noise that would come into those sensor readings. We were able to actually utilize some of the internal guts at that point because you were able to attach it to like how the sensors were originally used and how it separated and it was showing that angle. So our sensors were wired and hooked up to an Arduino, which is a programmable computer chip. And then that Arduino was wired up to my personal laptop, which was hidden on top of the machine. So we actually put a piece of steel in here to protect the electronics inside. The amount of shrapnel that went up and actually put a cut mark all the way through this. We had to have the laptop connected so we could one power everything. And then also we would have a live readout on the laptop screen of all the raw data. So we could kind of check back and make sure things were accurate. 
So the next thing is how we're going to display this information. So we figure a screen would be great. Now, we want to get it out of the way of any bullet impact, so we figured, hey, let's mount this screen up on top of the machine. So we built this really cool seven segment display where it would show the numbers from the impact and give you the calculations in real time right there. We made this display, mounted it, and thought, yes, this is gonna be awesome. And then when we go to actually shoot it and we walk away from the screen a little bit, we realized, hey, we can't really see it. Who knew a sunny day would screw the screen up? <laughs> Wait, yeah. Yeah. Us stepping back and not being able to see the screen at 25 yards, we knew we were not going to be able to see this at, say, four or 500 yards and had to come up with a new system for this. So that's why we loaded back up and headed back to the shop. Uh, so we're back at the shop. I was pretty discouraged, um, but you know, we knew we at least had a functional system for collecting data and all that. So it was just a matter of, can we fix this screen? and then get it to display at you know three, 400 yards in the daytime. The first thing I did is I, I took my personal monitor at home and I took it outside with my computer and set it up in a, on a sunny day so I could see, hey, can I see my personal screen during the day? Going to an LCD monitor from an LED seven segment display seemed like it would be great. Now, the issue with that is I had to reprogram everything to display on that type of monitor. So that was many hours of coding. How many hours did you spend on it? I don't wanna think about it. <laughs> <laughs> I regret this project. <laughs> so I did the coding on this, uh, but then thought, hey, let's make this as legendary as possible. Let's implement some old school arcade graphics, um, you know, some blinking MDT, a nice little loading screen with bullets and just make it the coolest thing ever. So I took the monitor outside uh, and then I ran to the other side of my backyard and was looking at it and could see it very clearly on a sunny day. So that made us confident enough for round three of testing. So now we're going into our third day of testing on this thing downrange. At this point, we also needed to now power a monitor. Uh, we had to bring a power pack with us, get that all set up, make sure it was protected by a piece of steel in case we did miss or something went wrong. Got it all set up downrange and we felt pretty confident. The screen looked good. Uh, we could see it very well from when we stood in front of it and we're like, okay, yeah, for sure. We're gonna be good to go when we get back up to our shooting spot and we'll be able to see this thing. So we moved back out to 400 yards or 500 yards and we can't see this screen. And we're like, oh man, we're now in the same boat. We grab the spotting scope, pull it out and take a look. And thank goodness we could actually read the screen at that point. It was still fairly light, but we could read it, read it well enough. So the first caliber up on the list was gonna be a 223 and it didn't go well. When we tested this before on our last, se last session, we shot it with 6.5 at 100 yards because we were really more concerned about how the sensor was going to hold up and if it was going to work. And we figured, hey, if it's going to work with a 6.5, likely it's going to work with a 2.2.3. Well, it didn't. Uh, we had really bad numbers, didn't work, it basically didn't read most of the time. Uh, luckily, we kind of thought ahead of time on this. We had a big, I think it was a 14 inch or 16 inch piece of steel on this target and we had some smaller steel with us. So we went down range and threw a 12 inch piece of steel on this uh, and to make sure that we was light enough that it would actually swing when you hit it. So by the end of the day, we had a success with this machine. We went and took a old arcade punching bag machine that was decommissioned, never going to be used again and turned it into a machine to hold a piece of steel and measure energy down range. We were so excited we couldn't actually help ourselves to go and test this thing up to a 300 PRC we had out there. Uh, and unfortunately, we missed because it was a bit of a windy day and cut our power cord to our screen. Uh, I think you killed it. The screen went off. So that ended our day, but we can definitely get another power cord easy enough and have this thing down range and show you what's gonna happen. So it's been almost a year process. It's about a year, about a year. A year is a long time. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs>